Hi fishy folks and happy water change Wednesday to you. Hope everyone's having a great week. It's hump day as we know. Happy hump day to you. What day is it Mike? Hump day! Anyway, today we're going to be feeding plecos. I'm going to tell you everything I feed plecos to get my plecos to grow fast and big and healthy. So stand by, okay? All right, fishy folks, the first thing I feed my plecos to get them big, fat, and healthy, green beans, canned green beans. I learned this trick from Corey from Aquarium Co-op, and I don't know if he actually ever got a can this big, but uh, at one point he did have a crap ton of tanks in his fish room, and he was feeding a lot. So I have a crap ton of uh, plecos, and I'm trying to grow them out fast and strong so I can sell them at the Keystone Clash and whatever's left will be probably put up on the website for sale, except for a couple of breeding groups uh, so I can keep my stock up. But uh, this can of fancy cut green beans with natural sea salt, wait, with natural sea salt, uh, was $3.50 at the local wholesale club, which here is called BJ's. Um, and uh, so instead of buying a can for a dollar or 88 cents, like a, a 10 ounce can or something, I got 101 ounces, 6.3 pounds of green beans, $3.50. If you quickly do the math, that's like 35 cents an ounce, and that's darn cheap. So even if I can't go through these all before they go bad, I probably still didn't lose money. All right, fishy folks, all I do with the canned green beans is I take a handful and drop them in the tanks with the plecos. Now, if there's like my L144 breeding group where there are seven adults, big fat adults and about a gajillion fry, they're gonna get a ton. But in the tanks where there's only like three or four uh, smaller ones, maybe they're only gonna get, you know, a small handful. So let's go do that, all right? So we got some plecos over here. We got some plecos up in this tank. There's one in this tank. There's a bunch in here. Give some more there. We got put those here and put those there and these there. Those there. Those there. Those guys to grow more. And they shoot to the photos here. And that's it for the green beans. I use, I don't know if you can see how much I used. Not that much, but I'll probably have to put some more in the tanks, maybe in a day or two. I'll, uh, I'll roll the camera by, heh, just getting a towel for my hands. I'll roll the camera by so you can see the plecos munching on them, but you wanna know what else I feed? I probably should have been ready and I'm not, so stand by. All right, fishy folks, that's it for the fancy cut green beans with added sea salt. You can see how much I used or how little I used. I'll probably have to come back and uh, maybe in a day or two and add some more. But from here until the clash, I'm going to be overfeeding those plecos to get them to grow fast. So don't forget the Keystone Clash next weekend, uh, starting September 14th, 15th, and 16th. I hope I got those days right. But Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Harrisburg, PA, check out keystoneclash.com. All right, so what else do I feed? Well, I call up my girlfriend Lisa at Super Cichlids. Sorry, Liz, but she's also my girlfriend. And I get some Bottom Scratcher, which is uh, obviously good for plecos, but my favorite is <laughs> Morning Wood. <laughs> uh, I also like, which this I found out by accident, these Ocean Nutrition Cichlid Veggie Pellets. And they also have these Cichlid Omni Pellets, like these. They sink very quickly. Um, the veggie pellets have 40% protein and these have 41% protein, but they sink and the plecos go crazy for them. So I've been feeding these a lot. And uh, that, like I said, I found that out by accident, but I like them and I feed them. And one of the few foods from Sarah that I really like are these catfish chips. I've talked about these before. 
Um, there will be a link for these in the description below because nobody locally really sell these to me. At least at Super Cichlids doesn't sell them. Go down to uh, supercichlids.com to buy Rapashi. And soon you can go to supercichlids.com to buy Ocean Nutrition. But until then, I'll put links in the description for these and these and the green beans. And you can check those out. So a good thing for Plecos also is uh, I do a lot of cucumber and some zucchini. Now, when I feed zucchini, uh, I'm lazy. I don't blanch it, but most people do blanch it. I probably will start doing that again because uh, I kind of went bad in the tank. It got all mushy before they could eat it, so I'll probably do that again. Um, but also watermelon. I put watermelon in there and they like it. Cantaloupe is okay. Um, that's it for kind of fruit, but <clears throat> they love cucumber. And I buy the English cucumbers, the seedless ones, so it doesn't make the tank so messy. So that's kind of where I'm at with feeding the plecos. Uh, how often do I feed them is your next question. I overfeed them because I have an auto water change system. So I don't really care too much about fouling the water from rotting food, but they don't, plecos eat a lot and eat fast. They also poop a lot. So I'll show you that in a second when I walk around with the camera, but yeah, I'll show you their poop. I know, but you'll see it. You want to see it, I know you do. Um, but I feed the plecos just like I feed my guppies at least twice a day. Um, the other thing with most plecos is you need some sort of wood in the tank to help them digest. So in every tank that has plecos, there's either trolla wood, which I got from Greg at my aquarium box, Greg Jones. Uh, I bought a, a bunch at the NEC. He had a really good deal, but this weekend at the Keystone Clash, I'm looking for some driftwood. So there's either trolla wood or small pieces of driftwood or medium pieces of driftwood. They like to hide in it, hide underneath it. And of course, they suck on it because it's delicious and woody. All right, guys, you want to see plecos eating in the tank? I'm sure you do. Stand by. All right, guys, let's take a look at these albino bristlenose, regular ancestress. You can see they are devouring the um, green beans the fancy cut green beans. Now, some people say you should use French cut green beans because they're cut in half. So the the plecos will eat the inside first. Um, if I can find a big can of fancy cut, I'm sorry, French cut green beans, I'll probably buy them because that does make sense. But um, this is what I found. So this is what I'm using. You can see what's left of the cucumber. Now, somebody asked me, when do you take the cucumber out? I think it was, I don't remember who it was. Um, I don't usually take it out. They usually eat it all. But like if I come back tomorrow night and it's still in there, I'll probably take it out because it's just gonna, you know, waste away to nothing. So he is going to town on that, <clears throat> that green bean. All right, let's look at some other tanks. All right, fishy folks. Here is a, hope to be a breeding group of adult albino uh, ancestress bristlenose plecos. The reason why I say I hope is I know I have females. I'm not 100% sure I have a male. Uh, either the bristles haven't developed or uh, I don't have one. So I'm gonna keep, if I see a male in the, the smaller uh, bristle nose tank, I'll definitely keep him, put him in here with these girls uh, so he can do his thing. There's a couple of caves in there. I'm hoping to get some action out of these guys. Um, you can see they're in the back devouring the green beans. I mean, they're veggies. They love their veggies. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. In this cloudy tank, which you probably won't be able to see, it's so cloudy because I overfed it, but um, there are calico bristlenose, and we're not gonna be able to see them, so let's just move on. In this tank, we have <clears throat> juvenile calicos. You can see there's one on the glass right there. And there's one on the glass right there. And it looks like a guppies, guppy babies are checking out the, the green beans. You can see there's also some cucumber left in here from yesterday. Um, some green beans in the weeds up here. I'm gonna, in the L144 tank, the babies go everywhere. I'm not so sure they're gonna go everywhere in these tanks. There's a assassin snail, hopefully cleaning up some work for me. Thanks, Mikey. In this tank, we have the super red babies, trying to make these grow as fast as possible so I can try to sell them at the clash. 
Uh, you can see they're everywhere. I think I have about 30 in here maybe, maybe 25. You can see one of them eating on the cucumber. They haven't started on the green beans yet, but there's a cute one hanging on the glass. There's a cell fin in here somewhere, probably underneath the filter. I'm not gonna bother him. In this Pleco tank, and this is the tank I wanna show you, I cleaned this tank this morning. I, I vacuumed it out and then refilled it up. And there you can see how much detritus and poop is on the bottom of the tank. So there's three uh, albino bristle nose in here and two uh, blue phantoms, little baby blue phantoms. I don't know if I can see them. I don't know if I can find them for you. They were hanging on the wood last time I saw them. Let me see if I can. No, I don't know where they are. Maybe they're on this filter. Yep, there's one. You probably can't see him because he's hiding. And I gotta fix that filter now when I'm done. So, this tank, I actually do gravel vac quite often. Uh, you can see him hanging out. Can you see him back there? Let's see if we can get him in this shot. You can see him wiggling around. There he is. But he, he hid. All right, well, that's what he looked like. There's two of those bad boys in there. And then in this tank, we have the long fin chocolates. Thank you, Mikey. He also sent these to me. There's a, a trio in here. At least there's three. I don't know if it's a boy and girls. I don't know what it is, but there's one on the glass over there you can see. Just chilling. There's one probably stuck in the weeds. These are gorgeous plecos. Hopefully I can get them to breed for me and start selling them. All right. In here we have the other colony of baby uh, albino bristlenose. I got these, they were quite small and they've been growing uh, really fast because of the rapashi and the green beans and the cucumber. You can see there's some chola wood on there that they can chew on. <clears throat> That's the key to, to any growth is uh, clean water, high quality food and lots of it. And that's what these guys get. <coughs> so you can see there's some cucumber in here that's floating and it's not really soft like mushy yet. So I gotta put it back on a fork and let them eat it. Or I could probably just put it up in this tank. These guys, they'll they'll swim for it and go up, but you can see uh, you can see how much green beans are in here. A ton of green beans. And lots of babies. And there's a good breeding group in here. I think I have two males. And uh, there's one in a cave there. That male looks like he's guarding eggs there. And this morning I saw somebody in one of those caves, so hopefully they're doing their business in there. But you can see how many snails actually are in here too. Um, you might be saying to yourself, Mike, why do you have filters and tanks with no air on them? Well, just because there's no air doesn't mean they're not doing anything, but quite frankly, I'm seeding them for the Keystone Clash. So I can bring my, uh, my fish and already have pre-seeded filters. Plus the pluckers like to eat off them. Here are some long fins, green dragons. Eating some green beans, loving life, eating the green beans. Look at them, that is a pretty cool looking fish. It's like an alien. And lots of uh, glass belly fry. Looks like there were two drops recently. <clears throat> so they'll be like, I, I've, I've been saying for weeks now, they'll be on the website soon. Um, that's it for the plecos, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned a little something about feeding plecos. Um, as long as you can keep a clean tank, you can really overfeed them and it's fine. They'll eat it and they'll grow. And uh, oh, all three of them are out. I haven't seen all three together in a really long time. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. Woohoo! You know what? I missed a tank. This tank up here has some calicos, adult calicos. They like to hide. It's hard for me to see them, especially with the detritus. Oh, there's one at the, on the bottom of the filter. I don't know if you can see him. He's, he's right there. But there's three of them in here. Um, I took everything, all the floating, most of the floating plants out of here in, with plans of cleaning the tank and I just haven't gotten around to it, so. All right, fishy folks, this is, I don't know, 
12 hours later, maybe, maybe 10 hours later. But you can see the remains of the green beans. Now, if these remains are still there tonight, I'll take them out because they're so little. But you can see they're still eating on that cucumber scrap that I left yesterday. Let's take a look at some other tanks. Okay, you can see these little guys still have quite a few green beans left. Uh, but you can see them starting to nibble on them. And then if we go over here to the green dragons, also mostly left. If we go up here to the L144s, most of them are gone. Uh, some of them obviously had a ton of snails on them. But most of the, the big ones are gone, or almost gone. Ooh, I wonder what's going on in there. Boom, chicka, boom, boom. Anyway, that's it for the update. Talk to you guys later. Don't forget, michaelsfishroom.com for all your fancy guppy needs. And uh, we'll see you at the Keystone Clash. Peace out, yo. All right, fishy folks, that's it for the fancy cut green beans with added sea salt. You can see how little or how much I used. Spilled some water. <clears throat>